بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم رمضان رمضان مبارك to all الحمد لله we're back here Allah what a blessing to see all the faces blessing to have this opportunity to be here and to partake in the blessings of this month. Ramadan is kind of like our human life. Uh, we go through stages in this month. The first stage, we experience mercy. And we, we, we hope to seek the benefit of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in the second portion, we'll journey through forgiveness, seeking forgiveness, just like we do in our daily lives with the ultimate hope at the end for salvation. So it's important for us to try to take this approach when we see Ramadan, when we experience its gifts. And the successful one in Ramadan and in life is the one who reads the Quran and contemplates its meaning the whole time through and through. So what is the purpose of Ramadan? Why did Allah prescribe this for us? And he says very clearly in the Quran why he prescribed Ramadan. Just like he prescribed it on those before us. For us to attain taqwa. This thing called taqwa. So what is taqwa? The summation of taqwa in its outward form is avoiding what's prohibited and fulfilling our injunctions outwardly, but also inwardly. Oftentimes we forget the inner dimension of our faith and linguistically taqwa means to ward off or to take precaution to do what you feel is safe in that situation guarding the self from Allah's punishment due to omitting a right action or committing a wrong action and there are many benefits and ways for us to achieve taqwa as I'm going to speak about but the idea for us, in order for us to achieve this thing called taqwa, we have to go through a bit of a struggle. This struggle of the inward self. A struggle and a move of the heart, which will affect the limbs, resulting in that repentance, that tawbah. To, to seek to purify ourselves of any wrongs, remove them from the present, and to hope for a future where we are completely free of these mistakes of our past but it requires a firm intention and there are five stations in this process so I'm going to list them briefly the five stations for us in taqwa as Imam Ibn Juzayl Qalbi describes it's guarding ourselves against disbelief and this is submission guarding ourselves against forbidden things this is repentance but then there's guarding ourselves against that which is doubtful. And this is being scrupulous, being nitpicky towards the self. Next is to guard ourselves against extraneous matters, things that might not be relevant or are unrelated to the subject, and our subject being Allah. This is the station of freedom. And then there is guarding yourself against nothing else occupying your heart, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the station of vigilance so if we look into the Quran Allah commands us in Surah Baqarah the first commandment he makes is O humanity worship your Lord who created you and those before you in order for you to realize taqwa so we see in our worship in our prayer in our ibadah fasting, we can realize this taqwa. Allah follows it up by saying, do not set up false deities besides Allah when you are aware of what you are doing. So we see that not only should we worship Allah, but we should become aware of what we are doing. We shouldn't walk through life going from prayer to prayer without our mind full of Allah and His remembrance. And the most subtle of these false deities, as Allah describes in the Quran, is 
the self, the desires of the nafs. The blessing for us is that we have all the answers. Allah has given us this guidance, this protocol for us to follow. The struggle against the self, that mujahida, is ultimately for our benefit, for us to get to that station of freedom, not feeling like we are dependent on the creation. But because we are dependent beings, we often turn to the creation to fill our void. But Allah says that nothing in the heavens and the earth, in a hadith Qudsi, says nothing in the heavens and the earth can contain me except the heart of the believer. So we really have to go inward in this journey, in this path, because oftentimes we focus on the outward. And it's very easy for the outward to become a representation of ourselves. And we think that if our outward is perfected, that we are following the right path. But oftentimes the outward is just submission. And we stay in these levels of submission and halal versus haram. But in order for us to move as an ummah and to rise up to the next level, we have to have a critical mass of people becoming more scrupulous and seeking to do even the smallest things that please Allah and seeking to avoid the smallest things that might displease Allah. Allah looks at our hearts. He looks at our inward. When we're fasting, usually people couldn't tell that you're fasting, which is one of the beauties of fasting and one of the virtues of fasting. But in Ramadan, when most people in our workplace or society that we interact with, they know that this is the month where you don't eat anything, you don't drink anything, uh, and, and so forth. So we need to go a little bit further and see what is hidden in our fast that we can focus on. And how can we protect our heart and purify our heart? There are, of course, answers for us. We have to start looking at the limbs, the inroads to the heart. What are our eyes looking at? What are we speaking about? What are we listening to? What are we doing with our hands throughout the day? Where are we taking ourselves with our feet? Are these things that would seek the pleasure of Allah? What, and finally, what are we putting into our stomachs? One of the most important things in Ramadan is guarding the, the iftar and breaking the fast on time. But what are we breaking it with? Allah tells us, do righteous deeds and eat of, eat of pure foods and do righteous deeds. So we want to start to focus on what we put into our stomachs. Because for many of us, this is uh, our base desire, is food. So we can start to be a little bit more scrupulous about our food. In this month, mercy is descending upon us from Allah. So we should also be merciful towards our families and those we interact with. Before we look to blame somebody else, because when we are fasting, our nafs is very excited and it's, it's, uh, it has a lot of fuel uh, to let out things. We need to be patient. And before we look to blame somebody else or yell at somebody else or invoke our anger on somebody else, we need to look in the mirror and realize that whatever we see in our brothers and sisters and the other believers, it is just simply a reflection of ourselves. Believe this. Because having a good opinion of your brother and sister is a reflection of yourselves too. So if we can work to think, even if this person is older than me, they probably have more good deeds than me. If they're younger than me, they probably have less sins. And this is how we can work through any of these ill thoughts that are in our self in this month. Because surely shaitan has implanted in us some devices throughout the year that are still with us even in this month where he's locked up. Who is the foundation of our behavior? What you put in, you will get out. So whatever you eat, expect to become it. If you're eating unpure un, uh, food that is not tayyib, then expect your actions to resonate. Otherwise, you'll be fighting very hard to, uh, to fight these thoughts and uh, uh, anticipated actions of your body. 
Food that is made quickly and with bad ingredients, these things we should avoid. These are two of the qualities of shaitan. So why should we put them in our food? Why should we make our food in this way? Ramadan, during the day, you don't eat anything. So see what you learn by not eating. And then at night, eat some food. But see who you become when you eat that food. This month is about remembrance, about slowing down. Take our time. Take our foot off the dunya gas pedal. Leave the world for one month. Make sure the profits are there, just enough to make your family get by. But just for this one month, let everybody else that doesn't want to participate in this month to enjoy the profits. Let's make our goal for this month about the profits of the Akhirah. Allow them to consume while we stay patient for the afterlife. <clears throat> If we can bring back this dignity, this spiritual dignity, this uprightness of the insan through our faith, we will start to see this transition, this shift in our society. Because Allah does command us to be those who worship Him and to be uh, righteous and to obey the law and to also be witnesses of humanity. But oftentimes, we're very quick to point the finger before we have forgotten ourselves. So do not command people to righteousness and forget yourself, as Allah says. The final thing I'll leave you with is the four major sins of the heart, which we should avoid and be very, very particular of, allowing to come into our heart, so we can really fall into a higher state of taqwa during this month. The four are associating partners with Allah. The second one is perseverance in wrongs, even if they are small, lesser wrongs. So we often think I'm not doing any kabair sins, any major sins, but this thing I do, and it's just a minor sin though. But this actually is a major sin of the heart that we should be very uh, uh, mindful of. In this month, don't despair of the mercy of Allah. We need to have hope in Allah. We need to have hope for ourselves when we are feeling exhausted and the Maghrib is about two, three hours away and we want to take a big nap. We don't want to sleep after Asr at that time. We want to focus on turning back to Allah in any sort of remembrance, the Quran being our greatest form of remembrance. At the same time, we don't want our hope to exceed the bounds and to fall into this sense of security from the design of Allah. So when we are breaking our fast, we should be kind of in between hope and fear. And in this way, we guard our heart the most. We make more dua during the suhoor time. We empty the stomach. We turn to Allah in all of our moments throughout the day. And we spread mercy and peace on those around us. This is how we can make our submission, our Islam, our obedience, our restriction solely for Allah. And then only then can we sow the seeds to make this earth a better place. I ask Allah to make us of those who are upright and righteous. I ask Allah to forgive our sins and grant us His pleasure. I ask Allah to guide us to the straight way and to make us of those people of taqwa. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم